Hi, this is James aka Deuce Deuce Any Good here for UltimatePokerCoaching.com and today I'm basically just going to be going through a hand review, a uh, hand I played recently actually, just a week ago, just so you can get insight into my game and how I can help you and improve your game if I were to become your coach on uh, UltimatePokerCoaching.com. So, let's go, let's go into the hand. So this hand, as I said, was actually played a week ago in a 109 party poker tournament. So we need to think about, you know, our buy-in. So it's a 109 buy-in. So there's going to be some higher stakes players, some more regulars. And actually, we ended up playing this hand heads up versus a regular here called Air Draken, a guy that I don't really know too much about. But by his stats, I have 400 hands on him. He has pretty good stats here. I mean, he has 23. VPIP, which means voluntary money put into the pot, so money that he wanted to put in. A pre foot raise of 15 and a free bet of 5, which is quite low, but you can tell by his numbers here that he plays probably professionally. So we need to think about our strategy, obviously, versus a professional player, as opposed to maybe playing against an amateur where we would play in a slightly different way. So here, base 10 of hearts, we have two options. Obviously, we can't fold. Our hand is way too good. We can limp in and uh, call to complete. We're going to do that with a variety of hands, actually. I mean, I, I wouldn't really be folding very much here this deep. I mean, I would maybe be folding the very bottom of my range, i.e. A3 offsuit, A4 offsuit. But basically, any suited hands and probably offsuit hands from, let's say, 10-5 offsuit, I'm going to be calling here. So because of that, I don't want to be just, you know, calling all my good, my bad hands and raising my good ones because that's going to mean that we're a bit of what's called unbalanced, which means that if you're unbalanced in poker, it basically means that you're very easy to read. So that's obviously that's not a good thing. So what we need to think about is our strategy here. Now, we could limp in, as I said, to kind of trap our opponent and maybe disguise the strength of our hand a little bit, or we could raise. I mean, the thing about raising here is that it's actually quite unlikely that we're going to get a fold in a sense. I mean, really, if we min raise or 2.5x, I mean, he's going to call with a variety of hands. And even with, you know, this, this good of hand, we're going to face some problems here because he's in position. So if we were to raise, I think we should raise at least three times the big blind, which would be 750 here. The advantages of raising are... But I think, as I said, he will defend very wide. And I think he'll defend any ace, lots of lower suited hearts, lots of weaker 10x, i.e. 10-9 offsuit, 10-8 offsuit, even a hand like 10-6 offsuit. So yeah, I think both have their advantages. This time, I think you could probably play what's called a mixed strategy here. I don't really have too much of a preference for either one, really. This time I went for a raise, and as I said, I, I go over 3x, I actually go a little bit over, maybe 3.2, 3.2 times the big blind, which I like. We give our opponent odds to 30%, which is good. If we raise lower, or to a lower amount, we'll be giving them more 35-40, which is really just giving them too good a price. One issue here is obviously if we get re-raised, that's not really an ideal scenario. But I would say that if we do get re-raised here, it's kind of an easy call. Even in the doomsday scenario where our opponent makes it a big size like 2700, maybe up, even up to 3000, I think we're going to have a good enough hand to call. I reckon they're going to have some bluffs, some lower, and a lot of bluffs are maybe going to contain some lower suited aces like ace three, ace four suited. And we're just going to have enough equity to call it for a, a re-raise. But to be honest, I would say that the climate of, you know, if really. That's kind of a spoiler or a bit of a, an additional note to think about tournament players is they do like to overcall the big blind. Players do not really like to free bet too much from the blinds, I would say. They like to take what they've called their price, their equity, and just go with that. So I, in a in sense, I think that basically our, our opponent is probably going to be calling a little bit too much here and probably not free betting enough. So I actually really like, quite like my raise, maybe a little bit more than a call. So, so far I think we played the hand fine. And, as I said, our opponent didn't re-raise and he called, which is going to happen quite a bit. So we go to the flop, and it's ace, eight, seven, rainbow. Obviously a good flop for us. Now, we have the 
Additionally, to top pair, what often players think about here is, well, I've got top pair. But there's other things to think about here. We have the nut, we have a backdoor straight draw, we have the backdoor and our flush draw, and that's also things to think about because these are this is a different, much different board than it would be ace three three or ace three deuce with this hand. Because we have backdoors that we can barrel, um, we can have straight draws that we can bet again. But we also kind of block some hands that our opponent is going to call with, like hands like 10-9, jack-10, things like that. So really, overall, you could go for a check here. But I think really our hand is just too good to check. You could maybe go for a check with a hand like ace-deuce here to kind of have some aces in your checking range here because you don't want to be checking and never have an ace here, you know? You want to be, again, what is called balanced. I just think really our hand is too good to check here and we can have a clean, what I call a clean street of value in that a lot of hands are going to call, a lot of worse hands are going to call if we bet. And if we bet and get raised, I think we can still continue. We have, a, a, like I said, the, the, the back door and our flush draw, the back door straight draw. Essentially, we have a lot of equity here and we're quite happy to put some money into this pot. So... We go for a bet, which I think is good. And, well, we need to think about what our opponent's going to call with. I mean, our opponent, like I said, is going to be very wide, what we call wide, have a wide range of hands from the big blinds here. I would say he can be as wide as maybe 10-6 offsuit here. Definitely 10-6 suited, so he can have that gut shot. I think he can have all five fours, maybe offsuit and suited. He can definitely have a hat. He can have a lot of middle pairs, a lot of bottom pairs. I think he's not going to fold even a hand as bad as 7-3 suited, 7-4 suited, a hand like 8-5 off suit he could have. All the worst aces, lots of gut shots. And also, I think even some other hands, I think even a hand like King-5 of clubs here, a backdoor, a hand like King-5 of diamonds, King-5 of hearts will not fold here either. So basically, you can see that like, when you, need, when you bet here, you need to think about what we're re in reality getting called by. I think a couple of years ago, people were a lot tighter in this spot. And they would maybe just like raise some of their bluffs and just call with like their middle pairs, their straight draws, etc. Now I think people really, because we are so deep stacked here and our opponent maybe thinks that we're betting a wide range of hands here, a wide range of bluffs, which we would be, they're going to actually be calling quite wise here. So we need to bear that in mind you know, as we go later on into the hand. Um, I do like my bet as well because, as, as I said before, we are going to have a lot of bluffs here. And if we're going to have a lot of bluffs, like hands like I mentioned as well, Queen Jack suited, Jack 10, even a hand like 5 4 suited, I might raise pre flop, King Queen of clubs, King Queen of diamonds, you name it. We need to balance that out by having some value bets. So, yeah, I think our bet is fine and our opponent calls, which we're pretty happy with. And we go to the turn, which is a nine of clubs. Now, immediately, this looks like a very good card for us. You know, our equity is somewhat improved. I mean, we have top pair now. Our flush draw didn't come in, so we're not going to make a flush in this hand. But we can make a straight. We have an open-ended straight draw. And I guess most people's instinct here will just be to bet, and to bet quite big. And I think that's a viable option. I think, you know, our opponent is still going to call with some worse hands, you know, hands like A6, A5, some of those flush draws like King 5 of clubs, King 10 of clubs, the called flop, we're going to get some value from, a hand like 9-10, a hand like uh, Queen 10 that might have floated the flop, you know, hands like, you know, a hand like Jack 9, Jack 7, Jack 8, etc, etc. Pocket 6s, pocket 5s, you name it, there's lots of hands. So we could bet a size here, you know, maybe well over half pot, Something like 22, 2300. But what we also need to think about is, you know, what hands can we have and what hands can they have? And when we think about pre-flop here, like I said, I'm actually going to be limping in a lot of hands. And when I think about my strategy here, I would probably limp in with a hand like Jack-10, this deep stack. I would probably limp in with a hand like 6-10 off suit. I would probably limp in with a hand like, you know, 8-9, Maybe even ace nine, um, ace eight, ace seven. I might also limp in. 
hands like uh, you know seven eight seven eight etc. I might limp in as well. I might have some raises, but the majority of those hands, I think I'm just going to play kind of a, a, a limp strategy, a call strategy pre flop. So when I think about my strategy pre flop, I actually think that really I don't really have a lot of super you know what we call nutted hands here. I do not really have many straights in this position, in the situation. Sorry, I don't really have that many two pairs. I do have some sets. I mean, I think I raise all these pocket pairs. I think I raise, obviously, I would raise aces, maybe limp it to trap. I raise eights, I raise sevens, I raise nines. So we can have some sets. But in terms of two pairs and straights, we don't really have too much. Now, our opponent, on the other hand, I think can have basically all the straights. I think he's going to call jack 10 pre flop. I think he's going to call 6 10 suited. Like I said, he might call 6 10, 6 10 off suit as well. Also, I think he can have all the two pairs. I mean, our opponent, if we go back to the flop, might play a mixed strategy of raising and calling hands like 7 8 and ace 8 and a 7 but if they don't they can have a lot of two pairs here in this turn all the 8 9 all the 8 7 all the 8 8 so actually when you think about it although this instinctively seems like a bet i actually think it's quite a good hand to check and that's actually what i went for my reasons are really as stated I think if we bet here and get raised, we put ourselves in a difficult position. We're not going to be bet folding, but we're inflating the pot and really leaving ourselves open to being bluffed a little bit as well. If we have hand, if he has a hand like King Five of Clubs, Queen Jack of Clubs, stuff like that, it's floated. Might be quite a good idea for him to raise, knowing that I don't really have many straights and that he does, using his range to his advantage. Now, as a regular, I think he might be thinking like that. So obviously, when we're playing regulars, we need to think about these things. If I was playing a weaker player, I might just bet here to get some value. Because I don't think a weaker player really is just going to, you know, turn a hand like Queen Jack of Clubs into a bluff and call or and raise, sorry, or King Ten, King Ten offsuit or something like that. But here I went for a check, and there's a couple of reasons for this. I think... When I bet and check here, it kind of looks a little bit like I could be giving up. Maybe I just bet a hand like Queen Jack. Maybe I just bet a hand like King Queen, King Jack. Maybe a hand like Pocket Fives on the flop. Maybe just nothing. Just bet, you know, King Four of, King Four of Hearts on the flop that I raised pre-flop that I just uh, I just gave up with. And I think our opponent, if they did float the flop, like we said with all those hands before, the clubs, the back doors. Even they could even get to a hand here like King Five of Diamonds. They're going to bet. I think they're not really. They're floating. Most when people float, what we call floating, which means calling the flop in position, it means that they are going to you know bet the turn and try and put some pressure on us. So I went for a check here, and I think this is what you would call the top of my checking range. I'm going to probably bet a lot of other hands, maybe Ace King, Ace Queen. Because our opponents are going to have hands like Ace-10 and Ace-Jack that they can call with and get more value. I'm going to bet all my two pairs here, I think. I would bet, you know, some stronger hands. But I think it's a good here to have an Ace in your checking range. Because if we check and never have an Ace, our opponent can put a lot of pressure on us. And we're going to have a very hard time calling the turn in the river here. So we actually go for a check, which I quite like. And our opponent bets 1500 Now... Some people for the fit, well, why don't you raise? You've got a straight draw and an ace. But as I said before, I kind of want to sell the story here of, you know, I don't have a very good hand and that you can maybe bully me in this spot. Maybe I'm just trying to trap my opponent a little bit. And this is what you would call a very strong bluff catcher. I'm trying to catch the bluff of our opponent, like I said, and, re and also reduce the damage if our opponent does have one of those hands that I said before. Jack-10, two-pair. Um, 6 10, etc. Now, obviously, as well, if our opponent does have a hand like 7 9 or 8 9, we have quite a lot of equity versus that. So, also getting 24%, this is just a pretty trivial, easy call, and that's what we do. So, let's go to the last street, the river. Now, the river is the free of spades, and that's really the cliche, you know, World Series of Poker commentating, you know, brick at the end. You know, it's a real brick, what we call brick can't really improve either of our hands i mean i probably have some more ace free suited than my opponent i don't i would definitely play a hand like ace free suited or ace free off suit that way depending if i raised it pre-flop if i did 
I think I probably would bet the flop some, most of the time and then check the turn. So I can have some two pair. Our opponent, I would think, is probably going to check turn with ace three to pop control. But again, I could be wrong there. They could also be betting um, ace three in the turn to get some value. So they could have some two pair. But essentially, like I said, this is just kind of going to be a kind of a brick. So what we need to think about here is what we need to do. I mean, we've turned our hand again into a bluff catcher. And in poker, you don't really want to change your mind in a hand. In my mind now, I've decided that I want to control the size of this pot. And I really want to let my opponent bluff. So I don't think I really want to be leaving out here some small amount, maybe some small blocker bet. I think I just want to check, which I did, and just let our opponent bluff or, you know, let their opponent bet their value hands. And we're just going to have to call because we know that our opponent has a certain amount of bluffs. So we check with this in mind and our opponent bets quite big which nearly 5,000 into the pot, about 70, 85, about 75% of the pot here, something like that. So like, what we need to think about here is what is our opponent betting? And we can actually, well, with technology these days, with poker, we can actually not actually think about these things in our head. We can actually use some software programs to help us figure this out. So here we have one called Equilab. And in Equilab here, I basically, if we go through the hands, if we, if we oh, actually, I'll put it back actually. What we need to think about is what our opponent is betting. So here I put their value range in. So if we go back to the board, their value range is, I put their value range as ace, ace nine, ace seven, ace seven off two, ace eight, ace nine, ace ten and ace jack. I haven't put all the combos in because I think that could be debatable. The same with ten six off suit. Maybe they don't call a ten six off suit pre flop. Ten six suited. Um, jack 10 off suit, Jack 10 suited, all the two pairs here, 8-9, eight, 8-8, eight, 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 seven, seven, seven. all these hands, 9-7 off, these are all their value hands. And what I did is to, to counter that, I put in a few bluffs. Here I have the King 6 of clubs, the King 10 of clubs, the King Jack of clubs, the Queen Jack of clubs, and the Queen 10 of clubs. And these are going to be what you call bluffs, obviously. Okay, so what we do is we put these hands in. We calculate and then we'll, we bring it over to the main thing here and we put the board in. So I put the board in here and you press evaluate. And what I did, I did this before. And what we need to look at when we're using a replayer is Poker Tracker does it for us. Think about our odds in the pot. So our odds to call here are 30%. So if you're using this, this software tool, you need to think about, you know, are we getting the right odds to call? Are essentially we making a correct call versus their range? Now at the moment, we're making what is called a break-even call. So basically, in simple terms, if they are betting their value range, but then bluffing king ten of clubs, king quick, uh, sorry, king jack of clubs, king ten of clubs, king six of clubs, queen ten of clubs, queen jack of clubs, we're making a break-even call. Now obviously in poker, we don't really want to be making break-even calls over and over. So what we can think about is maybe adding something in. So let's think about what we could add in here. Maybe we could add in, and what we could do is do a, a few different combos. So what we can do is just put, not all the combos, a few combos of, let's say, let's say a hand like Queen Jack off suit, which they might float the flop with. Oh, we, are all, we already have that. Let's say that we have a hand like King 10 off suit. Let's put a few combos of that in. So we put that in. I don't know, I put a few bluffs in more than I thought there. So if we put that in, that's going to be putting it up to 32%, which is going to make it a winning call, which gives us, you know, a 32% edge. Sorry, a 2% edge, okay? So that's what we need to think about. So if I, basically, in essence, our opponent needs to be bluffing quite a lot of backdoor flush draws here, and even a hand as wide as King-10, because really, I wouldn't say that he's going to value bet many aces here. Now, let's say he does start to value bet all the ace-6 offsuit here. Maybe value bet a bit too much. Maybe try and get a thin value bet. Put me on a hand like kings or queens or a hand like uh, king eight suited. I'm here, what I'll be hero calling with. If we put those in, even if we just put one combo, if I just press apply and we put that in, I mean, we're going to have a very good time calling here. We're going to have 36% and a 6% edge in when you're calling in a spot like this. You're really going to be what is called printing money. So what we can do here is it's nice for to have these software programs we can play around with the ranges and think about what we should do. 
idea really I just decided really obviously in game you know, you can't use software I don't have the time when you're not really allowed you're not allowed either to use these software programs I use these programs you know when evaluating my sessions after the fact really at the time I've got to be honest I basically snap calls here I mean I think I just have what is close to the top of my range here what's called the top of my range here there's not really many two worse hands here I can have I might pop control behind like ace king or ace queen. I I I I could have a hand like ace three that I check the river. With. I think most of the time I'm going to be betting my better hands on the turn, and a lot of the time, like I said, I'm going to be getting to the river here with a lot of hands like pocket kings, pocket queens, maybe a hand like ten nine where I bluffed the flop but then didn't want to inflate the pot to make it too big with a hand like ten nine. I could have a hand like pocket jacks. Lots of hands. So I think ace 10 is just really the top of my range. So I flicked it in. And uh, dun dun dun. Leave you in a bit of suspense. Our opponent turned up with king 5 offsuit. So if we start to put king 5 offsuit, if we put all the king 5 offsuits in with some other bluffs, even if we take the ace 6 out, I mean, yeah, we're going to be having a very good time calling here, easily getting the price. 43% where we only need 30. So I think in a in poker we often think about it in two ways. In the GTO way, which is like the game theory way of thinking about it, thinking about can we play in a in a perfect math, mathematical way. I think I play it in a GTO sense quite well. And I think also what is called an exploitative sense, thinking about my opponent, how my opponent thinks, how my opponent will assess and think about my range. I also think I played the hand fairly well, and obviously it's quite nice when you, I mean, if I, if we go back to the turn, if I ended up betting turn here, it's pretty unlikely our opponent would have just folded. Now, obviously, our opponent did have a little bit of equity on the turn. If he hits, uh, actually, no, we've basically got him drawing dead, because if he hits a six, he's drawing dead. So, essentially, we've got our opponent to put in quite a bit of money drawing dead there, and obviously, in poker, that's great. So... Yeah, with these blind versus blind situations as well, another something to notice, people do go a little bit wild. And as you can see here, our opponent uh, didn't really feel like folding to us. And um, yeah, it was a good start to the Sunday. And uh, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this analysis of this hand. Uh, I think it was a fairly interesting one, quite a simple hand in a way. But one that there's a few different ways to play it, and that's kind of the beauty of poker. So yeah, if, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, hope anyone interested will uh, sign up in some uh, lessons soon. Thanks very much and uh, goodbye.